Man, the love that I got from the fans, man. The love that this this uh the state brings, man. You see college games these days and you see half full stadiums and stuff like that after losses, man. We done state the course and the fans done state the course, man. I I can't do nothing but respect and love that, man. And, um shoot, Nebraska hasn't done nothing but been good to me, so That was Nebraska edge rusher Caleb Tanner explaining why Nebraska has become something more than just the place where he played football. On Friday, Tanner will play his 56th game as a Husker, tying Cameron Meredith for the program record. It's remarkable in a way that's easy to miss. Tanner arrived at Nebraska as a four-star recruit from Georgia who, according to the recruiting services, had an offer from the home state Bulldogs. A player like that is always going to come loaded with expectations. A long, athletic edge rusher from SEC country? Those are rare gets for Nebraska. And minds sort of naturally drift towards Randy Gregory-like production. Tanner didn't put up those type of numbers. But the longer I do this, the more I believe what Tanner has done is as impressive as splashy, impossible-to-miss careers. All Tanner did was be good enough to play his first game on campus and then every game thereafter. He improved as a player and a leader, earning captain status this season. He was a fixture somebody coaches and fans could count on. He wasn't a part of as many wins as anyone hoped or expected, but that only makes his reliability all the more remarkable. But there's one more chance to get one more win. In a week built around giving thanks, as an impartial observer of Nebraska football, I'm feeling thankful for Caleb Tanner and careers like his. A kid from Georgia came to Nebraska, sort of a foreign land when you think about it, and forged a bond with a place, a group of people, that will presumably last forever. You're listening to the IAD Preview, Huskers Hawkeyes edition. I'm Hale Varsity Managing Editor Brandon Vogel. Let's talk some football. It's a short week this week, a busy week for everyone, of course, so I'm going to dispense with a couple of the first half conventions of the show. Going into the final game, as Nebraska's losing streak has stretched to five, I'm not sure there's much value in reviewing how the Huskers lost the previous week. I'm also going to skip the three key players portion this week for two reasons. A, it's tax season in Nebraska, and Iowa is here to perform its annual football audit. Are you punting well enough? Did you properly declare every extra yard of field position gained? Did you know that you can't deduct turnovers? None of this is sexy or fun, but it's how the Hawkeyes are in line to win their second division title in two years. No loopholes. B, there's something I want to talk about more. This game doesn't just represent the end of the season, but the end of the current era at Nebraska. Speaking of being thankful, I don't know of many fans who will be sad to see it end. But as the disappointing stretch reaches its conclusion, I'm struck by just how this era was disappointing in a very specific way. Since the start of the 2018 season, Nebraska has been an underdog on the betting line 26 times in 55 games. The Huskers won outright. I'm talking about outright wins. Nothing, uh, nothing against the spread. That's just kind of a, a gauge here in this entire discussion. The Huskers won outright two of those 26 games as an underdog. Nebraska went 0-6 as underdogs in 2018, 0-4 in 2019, 0-5 in 2021, and they're 0-6 so far in 2022. Every time in those four seasons, the line makers and the public combined to create a line that said Nebraska was likely to lose, Nebraska did lose. That was true as 20-point dogs, It was true as two-point dogs and everywhere in between. That's a unique kind of hopelessness that you don't really notice when considering each game on its own merits. But here at the end, man, it feels cruel. In 2020, Nebraska went two and three as an underdog, but that comes with a caveat. That was the COVID year, of course. Constantly shifting schedules and player availability made for the least accurate year for the betting line in the last decade. The Huskers' two outright wins came as a two-and-a-half-point home underdog against Penn State in 2020 and as a one-point underdog at Purdue. 
you figure home field is worth two and a half to three points alone. And Nebraska Penn State was basically viewed as even. And the Huskers were probably about a point better than Purdue when that one was played. I probably shouldn't admit this, but I didn't even remember that win over Purdue. And I was there. One of like 10 Nebraska media members allowed in the press box due to COVID restrictions. And it was just gone from my memory. Now, I'll never forget it, as one of the two times the line said NU would lose, and it didn't. Over the last decade, the betting line underdog wins straight up about 25% of the time. At Nebraska, since the start of the 2018 season, the Huskers won 8% of the time under those circumstances. Rutgers, which is an underdog a lot, is the next lowest team in the Big Ten over that span, and it went 6-38, and a .136 winning percentage. Minnesota leads the conference over that span, going 13-12 and as an underdog, a 520 winning percentage. To put that another way, and then I swear I'll move on. Nebraska would have had to go 26-3 and in his 29 games as a favorite, simply to end up a game above 500 overall. That didn't happen, of course. Nebraska went 16-13 and straight up as a favorite on the betting line. And that's kind of what I'm left with when looking back at the past five seasons. It wasn't so much that the Huskers weren't as good as expected. It's more that they were as bad as expected nearly every time. But one more game and a new era begins. Before that, however, Nebraska is an underdog one more time this year. Iowa opened as a nine-point favorite at Circus Sports on Sunday afternoon. Midweek, it was up to about ten and a half. We've got some divergent projections from the two power rankings we look at each week. ESPN's SP Plus rates Iowa 19th this week with a 14.2 rating. Nebraska is minus 3.6, which ranks 77th nationally. If you go by those ratings, Iowa's closer to a 20-point favorite, according to SP+. The Football Power Index views things a little closer. Iowa ranks 31st there with an 8.4 rating. Nebraska is minus 1.9, which comes in 74th. The Football Power Index then, assuming 2.5 points for home field advantage, put this line closer at where it's almost at of the Hawkeyes minus 12.8. But both of them would have Iowa as a bigger favorite than it was on the midweek line. Per the Action Network, uh, again, as of midweek, 64% of the public bets were on the Huskers as of midweek. So sort of similar to Wisconsin last week, where Nebraska had the majority of the bets, but the line was moving towards Wisconsin. Seems to be happening here again, which indicates maybe the big money or the smart money still remains on the Hawkeyes. We'll see what happens Friday. That'll take us to halftime. Here's meteorologist Rusty Dawkins with Friday's forecast. You can follow Rusty at Husker Weather on Twitter and check HaleVarsity.com throughout the week for weather updates. Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Rusty Dawkins for Hale Varsity. This is the I-80 Preview Podcast forecast. Last one of the year. We're headed uh, east over to Iowa City to take on Iowa and you know it's November it's uh, the day after Thanksgiving so what's it normally like over there well normally it's not bad uh, temperatures highs in the lower 40s overnight lows are typically in the middle 20s uh, the record low for the day for for Friday is four which you know I mean could be worse record high 72 that was just a few years ago but we won't see any of those I think we'll be closer to normal than anything uh, if you're going to be there early tailgating in the morning. There is going to be a small chill in the air. I think temperatures will be right around the freezing mark. We'll say the lower 30s by 6 a.m., partly cloudy to and mostly clear skies by 7 a.m., sun coming up. Temperatures just above the freezing mark. A little bit of a northwest wind at 5, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. Then by noon, warming up into the lower 40s. Uh, that's average. That's where we're supposed to be, well, where Iowa is supposed to be this time of year. Plenty of sunshine. Uh, by kickoff, 3 o'clock kickoff, mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Temperatures around 42, 43 degrees. Uh, and then we slowly cool off as the as the day progresses, I think, by halftime. Temperatures around 40 degrees. Not much of a wind either. Uh, so that's kind of the, the nice part about this. Uh, if you have temperatures around 40 and a gusty 
north wind at 30 miles per hour. It's a lot colder, but this is going to be nice, right around 40 by halftime. Northwest wind, 5, 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. And by the end of the game, mostly uh, mostly clear skies and temperatures dropping into the middle 30s. So uh, really, it looks like a quiet day, a nice day, not much wind, plenty of sunshine, uh, and then mostly clear skies as we get towards the end of the game. Really a nice day for a football game. Now, if there are any updates, please follow all my social media pages, uh, Husker Weather. That's all Husker Weather all the time on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Rusty WX, that's... Uh, my personal account, all weather, Nebraska related all the time, and all of Hale Varsity's uh, social media channels or website, we'll be updating on there as well. Go Big Red! Now that I've detailed for you just how hopeless things have been for the Huskers as an underdog, happy holidays everyone, always known for bringing cheer everywhere I go, let's try something a little more hopeful. Let's get into how about Nebraska, how Nebraska goes about getting a different result as an underdog this time. With a win, I was in the Big Ten Championship game. I have to imagine Kirk Ferentz takes particular delight in this. After trading barbs with reporters early this season regarding his son, offense coordinator Brian Ferentz, and the Hawkeyes' moribund offense, here I was in the driver's seat for a second straight division title. Its Big Ten losses are to Ohio State, Michigan, and Illinois. Not too bad, given what we know now. Nobody else beat Michigan or Ohio State in the Big Ten either. How do the Huskers spoil this potential coronation in Iowa City? Here are three keys I'll be keeping an eye on on Friday. Number one, sack lunch. If you were to tell me this game would be a turnover free and the field position would be roughly the same, I'd tell you the team with the most sacks would win. It's sort of silly to think that a game might come down to, say, seven or eight plays between the two teams, but I think it's true here. The bad news for Nebraska. It gives up a sack on nearly one in every 11 dropbacks, a sack rate allowed that ranks 112th nationally. The good news for Nebraska. Iowa gives up a sack on nearly one in every 10 dropbacks, a sack rate allowed that ranks 128th. Whatever you think of Nebraska's offensive line this year, Iowa's is, by almost any measure, worse. The Huskers are more efficient and explosive in the run and pass games. At Football Outsiders, the Hawkeyes rank 105th or worse in all nine of the offensive line stats that site tabulates. Nebraska, while not good in most categories, is ranked higher than Iowa in each one. It's really shocking, based on what we've come to expect from an Iowa O-line. That has the potential to show up in a lot of areas Friday, but the most notable might be sacks. The Hawkeyes are better at getting them, 2.6 per game to Nebraska's 1.6, but they also give up more, and that's particularly true in losses. Iowa's 3.75 sacks allowed in losses this season ranks 101st. Knowing Nebraska will give up some sacks of its own, the number to hit here for the Huskers might be as high as four. That's a number Nebraska hasn't hit in a game since last year's 56-7 win over Northwestern. But nobody said this would be easy. Garrett Nelson, Caleb Tanner, O'Shawn Mathis, Ty Robinson, have at it. This is your chance. Key number two, once more into the fray. Look. Expecting Nebraska to just magically run the ball effectively after not really having done so since September is probably unrealistic. See, also, nobody said this would be easy. But against a good as advertised Iowa defense, the ground game is the path of relative least resistance. Iowa has the fifth best defensive success rate against the pass. Its 13 interceptions rank 15th nationally, and its two interception returns for touchdowns are tied for 10th. Against the run, the Hawkeyes are only allowing three yards per carry, fifth nationally. But their success rate against the run is, quote-unquote, only 52nd. If a team can remain patient and be happy going three or four yards at a time, an approach Mickey Joseph has been talking about for two months now, it can have some success that way. Nebraska running back Anthony Grant needs 91 yards to reach 1,000 on the season. It won't be easy to get there, but he and the rest of the Huskers probably need to combine to go over 140 rushing yards on the day. 
Even that's not a guaranteed path to victory. Minnesota rushed for 312 last week in a 13-10 loss. But some amount of rushing success is usually a prerequisite for beating Iowa this season. 140 yards, Nebraska could be in decent shape. To get a rushing touchdown also might be a harbinger of success, depending on when that happens. Iowa's only given up four rushing touchdowns this season. Three of those came in the four losses. Key number three, make Iowa make it from scratch. No stovetop stuffing here. Against an offense like Iowa's, you have to make it earn every point by driving long fields. No shortcuts, no pre-chopped vegetables, no bagged cornbread croutons, no boxed stock. Make the Hawkeyes make all that stuff themselves. If Nebraska's defense can, Iowa ranks 108th nationally at .297 points per play. The issue is, few teams actually do this. While the Hawkeyes' points per play is low, its yards per point is just average, 14.2, 66th nationally. It's because Iowa plays field position better than almost anyone. The Hawkeyes' average starting field position, 68 yards from goal, ranks 9th nationally. And it has a defense that consistently provides short fields via takeaways. Nebraska, of course, has to avoid the latter, but it also has to probably win special teams if it's to get the third threshold I think it needs to hit here. Have any edge in field position. That's a holdover from last week against Wisconsin, where Nebraska did get that and it still wasn't quite enough. But if this game is to go the Huskers' way, the blueprint is probably pretty similar to that game against the Badgers, just with a different ending, of course. So many of these games where Nebraska is an underdog have had the same ending. Maybe, as we're on the cusp of a new era, changing that outcome can be the start of something new before the official restart, latest restart, I guess, of Husker football begins. That's the show for this week and the last I-80 preview for this 2022 season. In addition to being thankful for guys like Caleb Tanner, if you're a listener of this show, I'm thankful for you too. I know it can be kind of weird and unwieldy show at times, and to be honest, I like it that way. So if you're a listener, I truly do appreciate it. I hope you find some value in the ideas we discuss each week. If it helps you feel even a little better prepared for the game ahead, that's really the only goal. And your support means a lot. It's the only way we get to keep doing business, to put it plainly. On that note, if you're not already a subscriber to Hale Varsity, or just looking for a gift for the Husker fan in your life, we're running our best deal of the year right now. You can get $30 off the price of an annual subscription. No promo code necessary. Just visit hailvarsity.com slash black hyphen Friday hyphen sale. That's hailvarsity.com slash black hyphen Friday hyphen sale. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I hope you have a great meal. Get to spend some time with the people you love and get to watch Nebraska do something against Iowa. Take care.